Hello everybody. We are going to talk about a unique vasculitis syndrome called Besitz's syndrome. Besitz's syndrome is a distinctive systemic vasculitis affecting various sizes of blood vessels, arteries and veins, leading to mucocutaneous, vascular, gastrointestinal, and central nervous system manifestations. The disease is named after Halusi Besit, a Turkish dermatologist who first described it in 1937. The exact cause remains unknown, but genetic and environmental factors play a significant role. The human leukocyte antigen, HLA-B51, is a major contributor, leading to abnormal T-cell immune responses, especially involving T-helper-1, T-helper-17, and T-helper-22 cells releasing several cytokines, including tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is a therapeutic target in some patients. Hyperreactive neutrophils are also involved in the pathogenesis of the disease. Some environmental factors including viral infections such as herpes simplex virus and bacterial infections such as streptococci are also involved. Clinical presentation often involves recurrent oral ulcers, which are painful and shallow, resolving within one to three weeks. Painful genital ulcers affecting the vulva, scrotum, or penis are common. Eye involvement may present as uveitis, anterior or posterior, or retinal vasculitis potentially leading to vision loss. Anterior uveitis causes painful red eyes with hypopion which means the presence of inflammatory cells in the anterior chamber. Posterior uveitis results in painless visual impairment accompanied by floaters. Optic nerve involvement can lead to acute anterior ischemic optic neuropathy or chronic progressive visual loss. Retinal vasculitis manifests as painless blurry vision, visual floaters, and scotomus, dark spots in vision. Vasculitis can result in superficial thrombophlebitis, deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and potentially fatal pulmonary aneurysms, causing cough, dyspnea, and hemoptysis. It can affect any artery, leading to aneurysms, stenosis, or occlusion, and even acute myocardial infarction due to coronary artery thrombosis is rarely reported. Central nervous system involvement appears as chronic meningoencephalitis, affecting brainstem, basal ganglia, and deep white matter of hemispheres, causing fever, confusion, headache, impaired speech, balance, and movement. Cerebral vasculitis may lead to strokes, and dural venous thrombosis can cause increased intracranial pressure. Gastrointestinal manifestations include abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, with or without blood, often involving the ileocecal valve resembling inflammatory bowel disease or irritable bowel syndrome. Arthritis affects up to half of patients and is typically non-erosive poly or oligoarthritic, mainly in the large joints of the lower extremities. Diagnosis primarily relies on clinical findings, requiring recurrent oral ulcers and at least two of the following. First recurrent genital ulcers, second eye involvement such as uveitis, third skin lesions such as erythema nodosum, Fourth positive pathogy test, which is a nonspecific hypersensitivity skin reaction induced by needle prick. Additional tests may support the diagnosis and rule out other conditions. Treatment involves oral corticosteroids or colchicine, along with other immunosuppressive agents. Steroids inhibit T cell activation, proliferation, and cytokine production, while colchicine inhibits neutrophilic chemotaxis. Azathioprine, another immunosuppressive, inhibits T cells and can be used in conjunction with steroids to control disease activity. Cyclophosphamide, reserved for life-threatening conditions like cerebral vasculitis, interferes with rapidly dividing cells, including lymphocytes. Biological agents like infliximab or adalimumab, targeting tumor necrosis factor alpha, may also be used. Many patients achieve remission with time and treatment. New manifestations typically appear within the first five years after symptom onset. Lifelong immunosuppressant treatment is generally unnecessary, reducing concerns about long-term medication complications. If symptoms are controlled and flares are minimal for one to two years, medication doses may be tapered down to observe whether the syndrome's severity diminishes. In summary, Besset's disease is a rare unique vasculitis affecting nearly all sizes of blood vessels. It primarily affects young age people 20 to 30 years and is more severe in men. The main pathological mechanisms involve activation of both T lymphocytes and neutrophils that causes endothelial dysfunction with subsequent roughness of wall. The clinical manifestations include recurrent orogenital ulcers along with ocular manifestations such as uveitis, 
it can lead to arterial and venous thrombosis in a variety of organs. The diagnosis is mainly based on clinical criteria. The mainstay of treatment is corticosteroids with other immunosuppressants such as colchicine, azathioprine, or cyclophosphamide. TNF-alpha agents can be used in certain cases. It should be noted that ocular, major vascular and gastrointestinal tract involvement are associated with poor prognosis while cerebral venous thrombosis has a good prognosis. If you liked this video, then give us your opinion and tell us what disease do you want to understand in the next video, and support us by pressing like, following the channel and recommending content to others. Thank you all.